everybody. Thanks for tuning in to us. I'm so glad that you have stopped and took your time. You've scrolled the internet or you've actually looked us up. However you got here, I'm just glad you're here. We've got one of our services, one of our words that we have given, one of our songs uh, we've put out here, and now we're together. The reason we do this is because we feel the Lord has put messages on our hearts, words on our hearts that we can help you. But the main thing is to glorify Him. So thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us. I, I promise, uh, don't just start and stop. Sometimes you got to catch up to me. you got to catch up to uh, everything. But if you'll put the time in, I think you'll find that God's got a word for you. Now, we'll be back in just a few minutes with some other things. And, and so just sit down, hold on, and let God bless you. I just about preached tonight from the book of Psalms. But I didn't. We're going to go to the book of Romans, Romans chapter 1. You can turn there. Romans chapter 1, Hannah, we're going to start with uh, uh, verse 14. But getting back to Psalms, nothing else will ever satisfy. That first song McKenna sang, uh, no, uh, Maddie sang, then sings my soul. You could hear that was Carrie Underwood. She's been interviewed a hundred times. And she said, that song is the one that she feels the most. That, and of course, her breakout song, uh, Jesus, Take the Wheel. Sing for God. Sing for God. Whatever your hand findeth to do it, do it with all thy might and do it as unto the Lord. Romans chapter number one. We're only going to do three verses, but they are some powerful verses. When you have it, you can stand with me. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I alluded to it just a little bit this morning. This is a powerful book. This is a powerful chapter. If you got it, say amen. Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. Everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As is written, the just shall live by faith. I, I need to back up. I want to start at verse number 14. Let's go back and catch that. Verse 14. I am a debtor both to the Greek and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed, say ashamed, of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. He uses the phrase, I am, in repetition. And we're going to go back and talk about each one. But when he says, I am not ashamed, I want to ask you the question. Are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you ever ashamed of Jesus? Amen. The scripture does say that. If you're ashamed of me, of him, he will be ashamed of you. Amen. I... I I think that's why when young people get saved and they get it in them, they don't back down. That's why they make the best soldiers. I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Amen. There have been some times, I'll be honest with you, coming up, I didn't want to say the grace. I didn't want to give the prayer. I didn't want to sing the song. I didn't want to let my light shine because there was something inside my heart that wasn't right. 
But I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Verse 14 said he was a debtor. He said, I owe a debt. Now, if you look that up there, I'm a debtor both to the Greek and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. The apostle Paul knew that the people he was going to reach wasn't the same people that some of the other disciples were going to reach. He was the preacher to the Gentile. He was going to the group that, if, if you've been following the chosen or whatever, the Jews really secluded themselves from everybody else. If you wasn't Jewish, and they're doing a good job painting that, and that's the way it was. Paul came along, and after he was saved, he realized, that he was a debtor. When, when he says, I'm dead, I owe, this is who I owe. I owe this gospel to the Greek and the barbarians. It's easy to preach to church people. It's easy. E easier. Listen, if you can't preach to your own, you really, really, you know. But Paul, this group of uh, barbarians, and then he, he said the Greek, and then he said the barbarians. He just took it. The barbarians, people that, I'll use this word. It wasn't because the church hadn't been established yet like this, but people that wasn't churched. My cousin was here the other night, and he's talking to me. And his girlfriend, <laughs> and he let a word slip. She said, what's wrong with you? You're in the middle of church. I said, God sees and hears you every day. She said, well, ain't you embarrassed? I said, I ain't embarrassed. I didn't say it. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not embarrassed. This is who he is. And then I proceeded. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make him ashamed. You understand? I didn't make him ashamed. I didn't, oh, you shouldn't have said that. You got to get out of here and call fire and brimstone down. I said, hey, God hears you all the time. We're, you young people, and, and CJ asked me if I was going to start having them come up to the front today. He, I think he kind of liked it. He, when, I, when, I, when I narrowed it down, he's gone tonight. Yeah, I don't even see him out there now. He's had... But don't be ashamed to get to the front, to get to the altar. Don't, don't. Well, let me, let me, listen, I understand there might be reasons to set further back. Good reasons. Maybe your ears, maybe your seat, your comfortability, whatever. But if that reason is because you're ashamed, he said he was in debt. Um, when I get amongst them, and I was today, when I get amongst like unchurched people, CJ's ball games now, it used to be Hannah and Andrews, uh, I'd get around their school people. I didn't change. I, and I was going to give them Jesus. But I remember in the beginning, I wasn't so quick to wear my Jesus shirts. I said, well, I don't want to make them feel bad. It ain't about them. Let me tell you about my Jesus. That's the reason I like that song Bella sings. Amen. I like that. That's one of my favorite songs. That Ann Wilson song, Let Me Tell You About My Jesus. Now, anymore, I, I, I've grown into the billboard size and I can walk around. 
and, and I got Jesus on my on my on my chest. And let me tell you something, and that's the most popular one I got. Just simple Jesus. But people say, I like your shirt. Walk right into the midst of wherever. Ball game, ball field, uh, down to the Walmart, wherever. In the restaurant, let your light shine. Now, I don't know about you all, but if you come eat with the Snyders, and we go to the restaurant, guess what we do? We don't just pray. We hold hands and pray. What's that? We, we, we're, we, we hold hands at the house. We, we hold hands every day. When we're in the restaurant, we're not trying to be showboating. But I'm not ashamed of it. Someone said, you're making them feel uncomfortable. Hello? It's called conviction. Amen. It's, it's a word that hardly anybody uses anymore. I don't want to offend you. The gospel will offend you if you're not living right. Amen. No, I'm not out there trying to purposely kick up a fight. But I'm not ashamed of my Jesus. I'm not ashamed of being a Christian. See, this is what the world says. This is what our government says. Well, y'all do whatever you want inside your church building. Just don't bring it to the school. Just don't bring it to the workplace. Just don't bring it to the, the public government place. Amen. I'm sorry, but we can't separate it. I just, listen, you, you don't take him off and put him on. Amen. He needs to be Jesus all the time. And he said, I'm a debtor to the Greek and to the barbarians. The barbarians, can you imagine them? I, I, I watched the History Channel. I know how they were. The barbarians is the ones that brought down Rome. Man, they, uh, Rome was dignified. Them barbarians, they, they, they served all the pagan gods and the, they were just as foul. Paul said, I love them. He said, I love them. Listen, I don't want anybody to misunderstand my viewpoint, say, on homosexuality. Listen, the homosexual is no different than the drunkard. It is no different than the thief. It is no different than any other sin. Do you hear me? We don't like to sin, but we love the person. Do, you, do, do we got that? No, we, we don't ostracize them. We don't make them feel like a third-class human being. Oh, well, y'all ain't amen to me. Amen. But if we want to reach them and save them, we, and, and God's had to, I'll be honest, God's had to work on me on that. Amen. We've got to love because they, uh, they all got souls just like you got a soul. See, I don't want to get into that too much. Sometimes we got to get called and you don't get to pick who you're giving this message to. Amen. I'm here to tell you, I want to spread the gospel of Christ. He said, I'm a debtor to the Greeks and to the barbarians. And then he says, so much as so much as in me, I am. There's that word again. I am. He said, I'm a debtor. And then he said, I'm ready. That's what old SpongeBob said. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And listen to what he said. I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome. Also, 
Now he's getting into politics. Now he's getting the barbarians and the Greeks and now the Romans. Well, they'll throw you in jail. Guess what? He's going to find that out. He's writing this letter to the Romans. He says, I'm ready to preach the gospel, even at Rome. Listen, I got to be honest. I, I, I don't like the city at all. I've had to drive in the city. I've had to do business in the city. Uh, I, I've, I've taken, we did sports events in the city. Uh, I've, I've been to the city. I got to go there to the airport to pick people up. And it doesn't matter. Baltimore, Washington, uh, uh, New York City. I've been right downtown. I had a tractor and trailer right down Broadway one time. I'm not a city person. Okay. And that's just passing through. Much more than being on the streets loving them people. Brother Shane does it once or twice a week. Goes down there into Baltimore and he loves it. He'll tell you, he said, I can relate there better than I can anywhere else. I'm just the opposite. I'm being honest with you. But when God calls you, when God calls you to a place, I need you all to pray for me. You know that I'm a very simple preacher. I've always been, if I get a call to go someplace, if I can go, then I go. Pastor Diva called me back around Christmas and said, Pastor Tom, the pastors have been asking when you are going to come. I feel you are to come. Now listen, I, I don't like India. I like India. I like the Indian people. But I don't like the heat, and I don't like the food. I don't like curry. I don't care. You can go to the Kentucky Fried Chicken in India, because I've been there, and you can order a number one, and it's still got that curry taste in it. Amen. Yeah, you can say, oh, this is, this is American. New. No, it's got that curry taste in it. They've got the Subway. They ain't got no ham on them subs. Uh-uh. Nope. So Brother Tom's just being honest. I ain't doing backflips about going to India. Plus, it's about another seven to eight hours further than what Uganda is. We get into our flights, we get into 25, 26 hours. Flights. But they, they've called. I've heard the Indian call. I've heard the Macedonian call today. I don't get to pick and choose. See, some people, some preachers pick and choose. You don't get to pick and choose. And so I'm, I'm sitting there saying, Lord, well, the ticket's going to be real high. Or, Lord, I can't get nobody to go with me. Or, Lord, the timing, I'm not going to be able to get off. Trying to make, guess what? So far, they've all been checked off. <laughs> Amen. You don't get to pick and choose where you go. I found myself yesterday and the night before, especially the, the night before, yesterday I'm in preacher mode. The night before I'm in hostess mode. Y'all do know there's a difference, right? So yesterday was, though I'm trying to be, and understand that even in this church, please don't get offended at me. When I'm in pastor mode or when I'm in, I, I, I'm not necessarily a hostess. I'm not necessarily trying to make everybody feel well. That's why we got other people. That's why we meet and greet. I'm, I, I'm on, I've got a message. I've got to, I got to be focused on some other things. So on, on Friday night, it, they, people just kept coming, and I'm at the door. I was one of the first ones in and one of the last ones to leave. I'd been here since about, well, uh, 4 o'clock, and then 5, I went home, changed, and then was back up here about quarter to 5 or so. And I, listen, a lot of folks, it's real easy. 
But there was an element. Okay? It wasn't hard for me, Alan. I, listen, I'm welcome them. You come through those doors, I'm welcome. Okay? I'm not preaching to anybody. I'm just showing you some southern hospitality. Come on in. You need a drink? Okay, we got restrooms here. We got restrooms down here. If you need to cool off, you can go downstairs. If, you need, if your crowd is getting, just hosting. I can't just go and pick all the country people out and hug on love on them. Hello. I can't just pick, you know, the smart folks out and hug and love on them. Amen. That's what he gets ready to say here. He says uh, uh, over there to the wise and to the unwise, when someone comes through these doors, we love them all. Amen. We love them all. Red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. Amen. English speaking, Spanish speaking, French speaking. That's another thing about India. I can get lost in Uganda and there's enough English I can get, I can move around. Let me tell you something. There are places in India, you may not come up on another English speaking person for miles and miles and miles. And the signs, they just as well be Egyptian hydro. Yeah, you got it. I can't read it. But it's my job to give them Christ. Be just, uh, I'm going to say something here. Y'all need to hold on to this. If you might need more of the Holy Ghost, some of you need to smile a little bit better when you come in, when you're meeting somebody. Just, you you do know, that's right, Johnny. Johnny's clapping his hands. Don't point at nobody. You're going to lose your smile. <laughs> no, just a friendly face. A friendly face. Right, now listen, I do. When I go home, when I go home, at the I try, I, I honestly, I try to love on everybody and smile at everybody. I try my best not to meet a stranger. To sh I really believe Jesus is that way. I believe when you come into contact with Christ, he doesn't meet a stranger. I believe when, I, I know that he smiled. Say, prove it to me, preacher. Because if he didn't, all the children wouldn't have ran to him. They, they ran, because children don't run to an old grump. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, I, I believe, I love the way they're portraying him. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily think he was a jokester all the time, but I think he had the, 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 the persona of love. We need to smile. Even when you don't feel like smiling. What's that old song? When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles at you. That's not true. That's not true at all. But when you're smiling, when you're smiling, God's happy with you. Amen. Because you're representing him. I've actually had people, this is the truth, I've had people for me, quit all that smiling. Why you, you've heard me tell the story at the bus garage, I'd come in there on a Monday morning, be whistling and singing because we've had some Holy Ghost move. It's early in the morning, it's dark, it's rainy, it's cold. And old Rick Mason said, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I've got Jesus in my soul. I can't contain and I can't control. Amen. Smile a little bit. Someone said, man, I hurt. You might not hurt as much if you smile. Amen. I, I'm, just, I'm just being honest. See, some of you got some, this. What I'm doing right now is you got some pretty smiles. 
It does take less muscles to smile than to frown. Smile. Paul, the apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed. Let me get to the message. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Amen. I, there's been some times in my life in the early parts. This is why the Holy Ghost feeling is so important. I'm going to tell you the truth. There's some of you in here. My dad, my dad's right here. My dad, growing up, his, his side of the family is very reserved, kind of quiet. They have a certain way that they do things. And when it comes to church and stuff, I remember something got a hold of him. Something changed him. Amen. He, he, he's, now listen, they were all, they were all, the Snyders are all nice, dignified. But my dad, I, something, all of a sudden he won't go to church. All of a sudden he's doing these things. What, what was it? It's that Holy Ghost. It's that Holy Ghost. I remember there was a time, ladies and gentlemen, he would never raise his hands. Nor clap. Or say amen. In fact, I remember one time, there was a little situation. Happened. He said, you make sure you tell that preacher. He told mom. He said, you make sure you tell that preacher. I believe Brother Richards says, don't, him, don't you have him call on me to pray. Am I telling the truth? He probably, right now, he walks into that church. They'll say, Mr. Snyder, would you pray? And I remember a time. He said, I'm not going back to that church today. Ask me to pray. What made the difference? Someone said, well, he just grew up. No, he already was grown up. He was a man. What made the difference? And, and listen, he already had experience with the Lord. He, was, he, had, he went to Sunday school. He had the Sunday school pens. He grew up. But he got close to God. I know. Someone said, I'm just not a public speaker. I understand that. But Jesus bled, died naked upon a cross. They ripped his clothes off. They ripped his skin off. He stood there naked before the world, the king of kings. And the only reason he did that is because he loved you. So you should not be ashamed of him. But we still are because in our natures, I understand. I remember, and it still happens on time to time when it's outside of the boundaries of the church. Somebody calls on me to do something. I feel my face getting flush. Patricia's holding her face. I feel my face getting flush. Uh, some of you get sweaty palms. Okay, anybody get the itch? Oh, they're going to call on me. They're going to call on me. Please don't let them call on me. That's all natural. That's okay. Some people are just that away. You know, now CJ, he's kind of an enigma. And there's other people I know like CJ. CJ, when he's on his own, he ain't afraid of nobody, nothing, no how. He will make himself known. Unless I call on him. So it's not necessarily your nature. Okay? What changes that? What made the Apostle Paul not be ashamed of Jesus? Now, we need to go back. This is the same Jesus that Paul put people in prison over. This is the same Jesus that Paul beat people over. This is the same Jesus that Paul had people killed over. He went from killing people over the name of Jesus to preaching the name of Christ. What happened? It was the Damascus Road experience. 
Then what happened? It happened there on that street. When Ananias came and prayed for him and he got back his sight and he got filled with the Holy Ghost power. Amen. He come out of that place after three days. He changed. He immediately, he immediately got up and preached. It's that Holy Ghost. I want that kind of boldness. I want that kind of boldness. Young people, look up at me a little bit. You got one sitting right on the front row. I was praying this on the bus the other day, Melissa. Um, I pulled around Hedgesville High School, and it was before Jason never got, Jason gets on the bus and talks to us. And before he ever got on the bus, I was pulling up there. I want to see, I would, I can't go into school and preach. You know that, right? But you guys can. And there ain't a whole lot they can do about it. Listen, I've read today, not very far from here, just a couple counties down below Frederick, they got a satanic club in one of the schools, and they're not ashamed of it. I'm here to tell you, we need to, let me tell you about my Jesus. Amen. They can talk about their furries and they can talk about their lifestyles and they can talk about their parties and their drugs and their orgies. Amen. I can tell you, we can talk about Jesus. And I would love to see what's happening on this stage and what happened here at this altar. I would love to see it start happening in our schools. Amen. I, I was praying with another person in ministry. They called me. We're praying about getting a place where we can have some type of a camp. And it looks like some money, huge money has come in. It's, it's, I'm amazed how God puts me on the ground floor of these type of things. And I said, you got to be kidding. I was just praying about this. I, I, these young people need a place where they can shout the name of Jesus. Amen. They can shout it in the school and then they can have a place. I'm not, listen, we built a church for it, but let's be honest. Sometimes people just won't come to church through church doors. Amen. So that's why we have tent revivals. That's why we do street meetings. That's why we do all different types of things. But I'd love to see some of you young people. That's one of my biggest regrets is I didn't witness more for God when I was in school. I knew about God. And see, I was the type of kid that I could be saved all summer. And by the time we got to October, November, I'd done backslid. And then over the spring, over the winter breaks and, the, and stuff, you know, they'd end up having a revival and I'd hit the altar and I'd pray again. Then I'd be good for a little while and then I'd backslide. That's the one thing that bothered me the most because I know now, what I know now, that if I'd had this same type of uh, the Holy Ghost on me and if I'd had the same anointing that's on me now, amen, I'd love to be in Hedgesville High School as an 18-year-old. Amen, lunchtime. Go out there with a Holy King James Bible, amen, and stand up on the corner, amen, and proclaim the Word of God. Someone said, well, you won't be popular. You, guess what? You're going to be more popular on what you think. Amen. At first, they're going to call you that Christian boy or that Christian little girl. Amen. And they're going to make fun of you. But I'm going to tell you, if you live your life and live it right and live it to the best of your ability, them kids will start looking at you. Amen. And for some of you adults, wherever you work, whatever you do, if you start living the life, um, the true life, amen, they won't make fun of you forever. Amen. They'll see something in your life. Amen. And they'll want what you got, but you can't be ashamed to share the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. If you're not ashamed of Christ, listen to me. Someone said, someone said, well, Pastor Tom, I just, I'm weak. This is, this, this, this is the equation. If you're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, if you're not ashamed, it's power. 
McKenna, I am so proud of you. Now, I'm going to tell you why I'm proud of you, because I remember it ain't been but a couple weeks ago that we had a conversation about you singing. And you said, Pastor Tom, I hope you don't mind me saying this. You said, Pastor Tom, I love to sing. I just don't like to sing in front of people. Right? And what did I tell you? I said, you're singing in front of God. Amen. Forget about the people. And ever since then, you've been singing in the group, and you've been picking out new songs. That song you sung tonight, just, just beautiful. Amen. Maddie girl, she's been singing pretty much since she's been in diapers, I think. Amen. I don't know, but she's been singing ever since she's been here. Ah, uh, and, uh, and so, but she too, there's some times it works on you a little bit. I understand. But the more you step out for Jesus, listen, the more you step out for Jesus, whether it's singing a song or just carrying your Bible for the hallway, whatever it is, if you're just going to, if you see somebody hurting and crying, if you just walk up to them and love, say, well, do you want me to pray with you? If Listen to me. Every time you step out for Jesus Christ, the Bible says the equation, said it's the power of God unto salvation. So McKenna said to me, she said, but you make it look easy. You make it look easy. She said it to me, Pastor Tom, you know how to do it. I didn't. No, <laughs> amen. It's just that I know that every time I step out for God, God's got this. Whatever it is, if it's, I think I'm just going to camp here for a couple seconds. <laughs> amen. So one guy told me one time, said, you ought to be glad you can preach. You'd starve to death. You can't do nothing else. Amen. The only thing I've ever had, Kevin, is a strong back. I can move stuff from point A to point B. Amen. You ask me to work a mechanic thing, I'll break it. Amen. If it's a carpentry thing, I'll mess it up. Amen. I will. I'll mess it up. Don't let me cut. Amen. But when it comes, when someone calls, you know, you're calling, you get pretty desperate when you call me for that type of help. But I'll go in Jesus' name. And over the years, let me share something with y'all. Y'all might not know this. Nursing home ministry has never been my forte. In fact, I'm going to be honest with you. The nursing home ministry... And, of course, my mother has been doing nursing home ministry my whole life. And I got drugged there. And I didn't like it when I was a kid. I, I, I'm, just gonna be an, I'm just being honest with you. They grab a hold of you and pinch your cheeks and, and you know, come on, come on, come on. That's just not my deal. But there have been, as a pastor... I get a phone call from a nursing home and they say, will you come minister? I can't say no. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is try to get some of y'all to do it. <laughs> I'm just being honest. But if I can't get some of y'all to do it, then that's where I go. I go to the nursing home. Someone said, Brother Tom, what is it? I don't know. I can't explain it. It's not the fact that I'm scared of getting old. I don't know what it is. Now, you let me go to the jail? Give me my good tar and let me go to the jail. I'm right at home. Okay, the rescue mission. Oh, I like the rescue mission. Street meeting. Give me a Bible in a corner. I like that. But that nursing home, still, I, I enjoy it. And I tell people, now my mom and my dad, listen, I've watched them so long. They have went from being 
Now they're the same age as all them. They're older than a lot of them people in the nursing home. I want to encourage you, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Whatever it is, whatever you're uncomfortable about, don't, no, don't let nothing get in the way of you preaching, of you singing, of you making cakes and delivering pies, whatever it is that God wants you to do. There may be some old, some old grumpy man down the street, down the corner, and God's put, telling you, I want you, to bake him a, I want you to make him a pot of chili. And you can't get away. Listen, the devil didn't tell you to do that. You didn't come up with that on your own. Holy Spirit's dropped that in your life to go take that person some chili. And you've him hauled around, you do everything. Listen, you, 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 you're not comfortable. Do it. Because I promise you this when you knock on that door, and that person grumps at you, what do you want? Blah, 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 blah. And you feel like backing up and throwing that chili right in his face. You, when you hand him, say, hey, I, I'm so-and-so. I just want to welcome you. I just want to be friends with you. The Lord told me, and he might make fun of you for that, but you say, the Lord told me I should make you a little part of something. I promise you, if you will fulfill that, you when you walk back down them steps, when you walk back down that, that driveway to get in your car, you will feel the power and the touch of God. I promise you, anytime you step out in faith, now, the next verse after this ends up about from faith to faith, and the just shall live by faith. If you want to see your faith grow, ladies and gentlemen, your faith can grow. Number one, don't be ashamed. Amen. Number two, the power of God, allow it to come upon you. Number three, whatever he tells you to do, don't ever tell him no. When I came up, Listen, I was ornery, I was rotten, and all the above. But I'm going to tell you this. If Pastor Richard said to me, do something, there wouldn't have been no sir. Brother Strickler, Brother Savage, man, I was a married man with three kids living two counties over. If they called me up and said, hey, can you come down and help work on the church? I got in my car and I went and worked on the church. We ain't like that anymore, are we? But I'm going to tell you one thing. Every time I got in my car, every time I went to visit somebody in the hospital, I don't like hospitals. They're sick in there. I don't like hospitals. They stink. <laughs> I don't like hospitals. They holler at me. Tell you, where are you going? What are you going to do? If, if God has sent you to the hospital, if somebody's asked you to go visit somebody, I'm going to say something right now and then I'll stop. You all, the cream of the crop, Sunday night folks, you guys got it going on. Amen. I, I get tickled at people preaching real hard to the ones that are living the best. Amen. But we do it all the time. But what I don't understand it's why somebody calls me up and says, will you go? When the Holy Ghost impressed you, I'll pick on my mom. My mom will call me all the time. Now, of course, she call, I don't know if she's called me as mom or if she's calling me as Sister Joyce. But she'll call me all the time. What's that? Mostly Tom. Now, she's pretty good sometimes. Normally when she, when she says, Pastor Tom, it's. <laughs> and I'll say, Mom, God talks to me. And he hasn't talked to me about this. Hello? 
But he has talked to you. Amen. When you step out and you minister to God, something happens. Amen. Something gets a hold. Now, listen, if you call me, I'm going. Because I can't say no to God. So don't hesitate to call me. If I know about it, I'm going. But what I'm trying to say is, if you're calling me, chances are is that God has called you too. And what I do a lot anymore is, especially when I don't... So somebody will call me and say, hey, will you go over free mountains and pray for such and such and such and such person? I never even heard of them. So you know what I end up doing anymore? Are you going with me? Amen. I'll go. Will you go with me? And let me tell you something. When we go together, then there's a bonding. And, and something happens. Amen. I want my faith to increase. And I want these kids, you're already stepping out. I want you to keep on stepping out. I want you all to keep on encouraging them. I want you to keep on loving them. And amen. Some of you are doing new things. You're, some of you are working in children's church. Little birdie told me you might want to do a little something. Amen. I, I love it. I want to encourage you to step out. When Melissa did this, I love it. Amen. I told her, I said, you need to get up on the stage with him. But she, whoo. <laughs> uh, she could sing. Y'all might not know that, but she could sing. Listen, step out for God. Maddie, I want to ask you a question. When you got done singing tonight, how did you feel? Say, well, say again. Happy? I mean, I could see from behind. And I could see strength in her. She's 12 years old. If she keeps on stepping out and singing for God, it will have a huge effect on the rest of your adult life. Amen. Christian, big Christian. Playing that guitar at first. Christian played up here for almost a year. And when we got the idea to do this, I plugged him in. I said, oh, my goodness. Where, where, didn't I? I said, you, I said Chris, uh, Melissa said, oh, I know he can play a little bit. I said, no, you don't understand. He can't just play a little bit. He can really play. Who's called me on church? And I'm amazed. And I told Christian, I said, man, you got to share this. I said, you, the songs he played tonight, of course, he didn't even have Bella to help him with the timing. Wasn't it wonderful? Amen. You just keep on, guys. CJ on them drums. Amen. On them bongos. I'm going to get him one of them beatboxes. Amen. We take that on, we take that on the street. They, 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 you, have y'all seen them? You sat on them and you... That revival in Kentucky, that's all they got. That's the only drum they got. They, they, got, a bo they got a box drum and a guitar and one, one keyboard. And the power of God is just moving. Would you stand with me? Now, I'm looking on this side, and everybody I see in this corner, you all are talented. I'm looking right here. Ronnie, you impressed me this morning coming up and praying for these people. I mean that, brother. You were up here. I remember when you were way back there. And then I remember where you camped right there. You camped right there and camped there. Won't be long, brother. You're going to be right here. <laughs> hey, there. Huh? You talked about it, you did. Listen, I see talent here. I see so much talent. I, I noticed that the talent is different here than over here because there's different jobs. T 
takes different things. Amen. And back through here, Vicki, you don't know what you done for me tonight. Everybody knows I'm up here praising the Lord and turned around, looked, and I saw all this blonde hair. And as Vicki, she come up here to praise the Lord. She's used to being camped in the back, but she came out front. Amen. That's it. You want your kids to praise, they got to see you praising. You want your kid to pray, you got to see you praying. Amen. You want your kid to read the Bible, you got to see you reading the Bible. And I could just go on back through there. Roger, you came in my office this morning, and you were just beat down. Your words, I'm drowning. But it was you were the key to the entire service today. I don't know if I got to the altar had you not had your problem. You, it was the key to the service today. I appreciate you. Amen. Amen. I just appreciate you guys so much on the Sunday night crew, and I just want to encourage you guys to keep on stepping out. Amen. And we're going to be like Brother Butts. Amen. We've seen boo people get filled with the Holy Ghost. Were you involved in any of that? A little bit. I know he was. Because when he sees somebody at the altar, he, he's one of the first ones up there. He loves to see people get blessed in the Holy Ghost. I want to encourage you. If you do have a reservation, it's hard. Step through it. Just step through it. Because it's your power of God unto salvation if you step through it. Tabby, Kevin, I've seen a change. You've been through hell. You shared with us the first time. You really shared like that tonight. But look what God's doing for you guys. You're spiritually stronger than what I think I've ever seen you. Keep on stepping through. Keep on pushing. When Jeremiah and Shannon and Vicki and Miss Norma, when they, when they started this soul squad, I thought that they were going to pull their hair out. Now we're starting to see the fruits of these trips and the work, what God is doing. And when God tells you to do something that are going to be born for the new moments that are going to happen here for this coming Friday night, Lord, for these young people, God, Lord, I pray, God, for this coming year, God, help us to step out in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I pray a blessing on this pastor. Help me, Lord, to have a kind heart. Help me to have a helping heart. Help me to push at the right time. Help me to hold at the right time. Lord, help us, Lord, to do what you want us to do. Jesus. And we thank you for it in the precious name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this. And listen, the most important thing about this is if you do not know Jesus, ask him into your heart. Pray that sinner's prayer. If you need to contact me, by all means, please contact me. Uh, if you've got questions, we believe God. Don't matter where you're at in the world, we will make contact back with you. And we appreciate your giving. Uh, this kind of thing does cost a little bit of money. And we're asking for help. You can help us. We've got all the information with our tithely. You can send money through there. Uh, we appreciate your prayers and your response and for just liking us. Spread the news. Tell everybody that you know that Jesus saves and he's coming soon. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.